welcome to the third lesson our third lesson is basically to see the various devices that I told you in lesson one I skipped them in lesson two purposely so in our circuit in our simple circuit we may have a measuring device known as voltmeter the voltmeter will measure the chemical energy in the source of electricity like a cell we do not use the term electrical energy in the source only when it is in the wire the chemical energy there will set the electrons to flow it will trigger a flow so that capacity to trigger the flow is known as electromotive force electromotive force is measured using a voltmeter a voltmeter is an electrical device that is used to measure electromotive force okay it is a force that sets the electrons in motion electromotive force is a force that triggers the electron to flow in a circuit what device is used to measure that the device is known as a voltmeter how is it connected we shall reserve that for the next lesson or the second lesson from now so that we shall deal now with the theory that we have learned so lesson five or six we shall deal with the apparatus you will see them for now i want you to know a voltmeter measures electromotive force how is it connected it is connected in parallel and we shall observe that in lesson six there is another device known as ammeter and whose symbol is shown here the voltmeter is basically a circle with a v inside ammeter is basically a circle with a capital a inside ammeter measures flow of electrons which we call current okay which we call current so we shall deal with the current in our lesson 4 So these are part of the components of a simple circuit. Just to remind you, we have seen the symbol for source e.g. a cell and if there are many we shall show you next lesson. You know what role a conductor plays? Conductor or wires, they connect all the devices. We know what a switch does is breaking and making the circuit. A switch is a control device. Then we have the load in our first lesson it was a bulb. It offers resistance to the flow of electrons and therefore some energy will be used to overcome that and we look at it in a different form of energy now an electric circuit may be under the following conditions so when we are talking about electric circuit it can be in any of the three conditions i've listed below one is called closed circuit So when we talk of a closed circuit 
is a circuit where all the parts are connected together and the load is in working condition. That is a closed circuit. So remember the condition is all the parts are connected together. So the, what connects them together is a conductor. What is basically conductor? A wire. So a wire connects device 1 to device 2, from 2 to 3, maybe from 3 back to 1. So it is a connector, a connector. It connects the various devices. And the load must be in working condition, because if it is not in working condition, then it is not a closed circuit as far as physics is concerned. Number two condition is an open circuit. What is an open circuit? The switch is open. That is an open circuit. The switch is open. What else? Current therefore does not flow. Now current, we will define it in the next lesson. But in short, you can write the flow of electrons does not take place because the path of those electrons is not complete. Okay? And what else do we see? No energy consumed by the load. So the load does not get the energy for it to give us useful work. The load is supposed to do useful work. It's supposed to do some work for us, e.g. to emit light, e.g. to give sound. Another example, to give us heat, to give water the heat so that it is heated. So these are things you can see at your home that an electric circuit can provide heat energy for us. It can provide light energy. It can provide sound energy. Now since it is open circuit, the switch is open. What, are the, what is the consequence of switch being open? There is no flow of electrons. The flow of electrons is what we call current. And since there is no current, then it cannot consume energy. The load cannot consume energy and therefore if there is no energy consumed, there will be no work done for us. And lastly, a short circuit. Please, a short circuit is basically when the load does not get enough current. So when there is no flow of electrons through the load, then we call it a short circuit. Maybe you can really magnify the word short in the sense it does not follow the required path. The electrons cannot follow the required path. They have taken, in quotes, a shortcut. And a shortcut in this sense is that the electrons have failed to flow through the load. They are going back to the source, yet the intention is the electron should flow through the load so that the load can do some work for us. So I've just given you a, a brief here diagram that you see if the flow, electrons flow, okay, electrons flow, they cannot pass here. This is the load. Instead, they have taken a short path, a path devoid of the load. So if the electrons flow through just conductor without reaching the load, then that is what we call short circuit. I hope you will be able to play again and again and then 
I'll give you my number here so that in case you have any troubleshooting, you can send a message. My number is 0722 641201. So you can have this. As you go through, you can have this. You can comment on the video what we need to add. But this is the basic structure of what you expected to know, the electric circuit. This is lesson three. Bye-bye. Till then, we meet during lesson four.